Here we go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Game of Blake 90 here, presenting y'all with another Sonic Fan Game Showcase video. Now, this one is a bit similar to a showcase I'd done previously for a fan game called Sonic 4 The Genesis, because this fan game is actually called Sonic 4 Reimagined Adventure Episode 1. And, dog, this game kicks off with a fan made Sonic CD style intro that was made for Sonic 4. It's a shame it was never the official theme, because in comparison to what we actually got, this one sounds a lot more pleasing to the ears, as do the aesthetics for the title screen and the options menu. As you can already see, it gives you the, uh, a slight remix of the theme you know from the Sonic 4 options menu, only it sounds a lot more lively, in my honest opinion, as the title screen theme. Anyway, again, this game is called Sonic 4 Reimagined Adventure, and I compared it to Sonic 4 the Genesis, because in that fan game, um, the Genesis assets were reused to recreate Sonic 4 as we knew it, completely the same level layouts and whatnot. This aims to do a similar goal, but with the style of Sonic Mania, meaning it applies a Mania retouch to Sonic 4 Episode 1. You can already see it from the, um, the reusing of Genesis assets, but definitely with some new twists and turns, and of course the Mania animation would be thrown in. So, if y'all are ready, let's jump into this game, assuming I can actually get the get the menu to work for me, because though this game does have controller support, that isn't the case for the options menu. You have to use the keyboard for that one. And you could skip this cutscene as well, but I don't want to do that, because this is too clean a cutscene to skip over. You got Sonic flying aboard with Tornado, entering Splash Hill Zone. Also, look at this. The remnants of the dead egg robot from Sonic 3. Just like Sonic 4 the Genesis, this game aims to reconnect the events of Sonic 3 and Sonic 4 into a shared line of continuity. As, according to some Sonic timeline that had been constructed, we've had to have uh, jump between multiple universes to appease continuity for every single line of Sonic games out there. For example, the Sonic 4 games, Episodes 1 and 2, were connected to the storyline of Sonic CD, and CD itself is considered to take place in a timeline separate from that of the basic Sonic Classic games, which are 1, 2, and 3 and Knuckles. Which I don't understand why it's the case. I guess you could blame the magic of the Time Stones sort of separating reality so that the event Sonic 4 took place in a universe that isn't the same as that of the one in Sonic 3. The modern Sonic universe, in other words. It just... I know it gets complex because it just sends the continuity all over the place. So Sega didn't exactly have a world of a consistent storyline with Sonic in mind back when they launched the franchise, so... You can imagine part of the reason why the fan base so split down the middle. Anyway, this is just a demo for the game, unfortunately, so the only thing you're gonna get to play is the first act of Splash Hill Zone. But already, it's it's looking incredibly promising. As I said, we use a Genesis asset, but this one applies a far more creative touch than what you've seen in um, Sonic 4 by Genesis. Not, not to draw a comparison between the two, because I love both fan games, and I hope that they will see completion. But sometimes it's always good to re-experience concepts from a fresh perspective. In particular, the background for Splash Hill, which is looking a lot more colorful and flowery, looks a lot more lifelike than what you see in the actual Sonic 4. Not to shame anybody who likes the original Sonic 4, I like those games myself. Uh, don't kill me for that admission. But seriously, I do like those games, as they did um, present a promising concept that I don't think was fully realized, but it had a somewhat decent go even if it felt lacking in some aspects. This, on the other hand, feels like a step up the ladder, and I don't say that solely because of the use of classic Sonic. Though it is a little weird to call Sonic 4 a continuation of the classic Sonic storyline, when it used modern Sonic, <laughs> and the homing attack. That was a little weird. I didn't complain about that, though, but I could see the disparity between um, what classic and modern fans thought of the game overall. Anyway... For the most part, the layout for this take on Splash Hill Act 1 is mostly similar, but again, I did say that there will be a Mania retouch involved, so there will be some variance to this stage. Let's see if we can jump on up here, pick up some lives. Oh, by the way, if you couldn't tell with the command at the upper right, yes, you can go supersonic. Like, um, right about now. 
I'm using my uh, Sonic controller pad, and yet the input that was displayed at the upper right was that of a PS4 input. So I got a little confused with which one it was, but here we go. And yes, yeah, <laughs> this is indeed a remix of the um the Super Sonic theme you heard in Sonic 4. I didn't really think it was honestly impressive enough to capture the um the splendor that normally belies Super Sonic. I thought it was okay, but it suffered from the same issue as that of Sonic 3 and Sonic 2, and that it became repetitive awfully quickly. But here it was not so repetitive. Quick little cutscene here for what could have been the first Eggman boss. Also, listen to this. Work that sucker to death. Come on now, work that sucker to death. <laughs> This is a beautiful remix of a Sonic CD boss theme, and it places emphasis on the lyrics that are heard in the Japanese version of CD. This, the, the first time I listened to this, I just about lost my mind. I couldn't really act to outside and whatnot, because I was messing around with this game late at night, and I didn't want to risk waking anybody up. But had this taken place earlier in the day, I think you would have been amused by how much I was popping off when I first heard this theme. Sadly, that signals the end of the game, unfortunately, as I did say as a demo. And you have the option to head back to the menu immediately afterward, or exit the game. But, I don't want the showcase to be too short, so I'm going to play the stage again. But before we do that, we're going to look at the options and see what is available. There is the music. Oh! Okay, so you have the option to switch between the original soundtrack for Sonic 4 and the remix. This I hadn't known about. Also, what are these options? Juba Sonic scales and colors? Wait, so does this mean... Oh, you know what's funny? I was going to talk about how this game didn't come with a drop dash, but evidently, you can equip that skill from the options menu, or you can go with the homing attack as it seems Sonic 4, or the super peel out, or the hint to shield. Funny how I never realized that until now. You can also pick... Yo, it's a modern sprite? Are you kidding me? Ah, but it said it's not available yet. Bummer. I got all excited and whatnot, because I thought I'll be actually about to go modern with this game, but apparently not. Sonic Colors. I see the reference to the actual game, guys. You think you slick, huh? <laughs> okay, so let's see. What are the colors that are available? The Sonic 3, Sonic... Um, Sonic 2, Sonic 1 is CD, and Sonic 4. Uh, made classic, of course, rather than the modern sprite. I cannot believe it's not ready to show off yet. This is, however, the first demo, so I imagine that there is a lot that they've left unfinished. Sonic 2, Sonic 1 and CD. Which sprite do I want to show off exactly? Huh? This is a Sonic 3 sprite they said? Looks a little weird, though, because all it carries over is the darker blue tinge from Sonic as he appears in Sonic 3, rather than his animations. But, uh, let's pick that one anyway. Might as well mess around with it. And I feel like seeing what he can do with a homing attack, so let's go with that. Now it's back out. Let's see. And, um, I know some of you might not like the original soundtrack for Sonic 4, but I'm gonna give it its chance to shine, because why not? Also, Zoom. Would you like the camera to approach Sonic when he's bored? That must be referring to his idle animation, which is triggered when you don't control Sonic for a period of time. Let's try that. Look where you are going. What does this mean exactly? Does it mean like how the camera worked in CD, where it eventually slows down if you go a little too fast or something like that? Just gets thrown all center? Let's try that anyway. Now I'm really glad I decided to show off the options menu in this showcase because I would have been missing out on a variety of trees to show off. Kind of like how I inadvertently managed to do with the uh, showcase for a Sonic Expeditive when I showed off an update that implemented a tutorial mode, which I thought was quite a shame. Uh, which I thought was quite a shame as it, I failed to show up a tutorial, so I had to make an addendum video to make up for that. Or rather, not showing up a tutorial, a, a Super Sonic! The title screen secret. That was why I failed to show up in the initial video, so I had to make an addendum video for it. Anyway, there is a showcase, not the showcase, the cutscene to signal the start of the demo, but there's no need to see it again. We're just going to go back to Out 1, the new adventure begins, and let's see 
how this game feels when you have the actual Sonic 4 music playing. And now as for Sonic 3 Sonic. Hmm... Exactly as I said... Exactly as I said, he only carries all the darker blue tinge to his fur from Sonic 3 rather than his actual animation, but that's perfectly fine. And there's his homing attack, which becomes somewhat of an air dash when there's nothing to lock onto. That we can deal with. And of course, regardless of whichever skill you pick, you're always equipped with a spin dash. You're never going to a Sonic game without it. That's been a cardinal rule since the implementation of Sonic 2. Now, it said something about activating a close-up camera angle whenever Sonic is bored. Is that activating stand still too long? Well, he moved slightly, but he's not looking at us yet. Uh, Sonic. Oh, there we go! <laughs> okay, so it zooms right up to Sonic's face if he's just like, Yo, bro, what are you doing? You didn't do anything at all? I wonder if you stood there long enough, it would activate um, a feature that was seen in Sonic CD, where he would just jump off the screen to his death and call a game over if you just didn't control him at all for like a couple of minutes. Anyway, there's a homing attack in action. Works exactly as it did in the original Sonic 4. When you're close enough to lock onto something, you'll see a targeting reticle, and this applies to springs, badniks, and I'm pretty sure it works for... Well, that was my bad. But I'm pretty sure it works for item boxes as well. So I won't confirm as such until I get an opportunity to try it. Oh! And one new feature that was added to... This fan game's take off Splash Hill Act 1 is the inclusion of the water geyser, one of which you can actually run across. Like I shown off when I uh, previously played this level, but I didn't really bother to comment on it. Oh, wait, hold. Oh! Oh, wow! So, there's an animation when Sonic's falling downward through the sky. Like this. Well, not while he's been dashing, of course, but what if he runs off and it shows up? It does show up. That's cool! Same for if you're running up a ledge that you lose enough speed that you can't make your way up to the ledge any longer, and you just fall back down. <laughs> also, if you're wondering, yes, the physics in this game see a dramatic improvement in comparison to the original Sonic 4. The physics, in my opinion, weren't too terrible in Sonic 4, but there were certainly a number of instances where they didn't make sense. For example, if you just walked up walls instead of trying to spin dash up them, you were more likely to clear the entire wall, as opposed to in the classic Sonic games, where you absolutely had to build a speed to get over a wall, but that wasn't so much the case in Sonic 4. <laughs> and that was one of the uh, factors that received a commendable number of complaints. <laughs> and I kind of understand where they were coming from there. The physics in Sonic 4 were just weird. At least they saw an improvement in Episode 2, but not so much in Episode 1. And because we are using the actual Sonic 4 music, that is the actual boss theme, which sadly doesn't include the lyric, Work that sucker to death. I think hands down, the updated remix was the winner in this co contest. <laughs> anyway, well once again at the end of the stage, sorry for not showing off Super Sonic, but considering that we only had one act to work with, there wasn't much to show off to begin with, so there you go. This is my showcase for Sonic 4 Reimagined Adventure Episode 1. And to the guys that poured their blood, sweat, and tears into bringing up this demo for the fan game, hear me loud and clear. I want to see more. Please give us more. Don't keep us waiting too long for the next demo. But uh, take your time, of course. Don't feel pressured. <laughs> so yeah, that was Sonic 4 Reimagined Adventure Episode 1. Thanks to everybody for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, Drop those likes and comments. Let me know what you thought about my showcase. And to keep up with my Sonic content, because that's what I post regularly on this channel, of course, hit that sub button and ring that bell. Always a pleasure to hear from you guys. I also would like to thank everybody on my YouTube channel, in my Discord server, everybody who's followed me across all of my social media platforms for their overwhelming support of my content. I'm glad to see that you all have been deriving some enjoyment from it, and I hope to continue to entertain you because I sure plan to be around for a long time. I don't know about forever, but a long time, that much is for sure. So yeah, I'm out of here, guys. If you want to try this demo for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can download it and give it a go. Just remember, controller support doesn't work in this menu for whatever reason, but it does work during the game, although you'll only have one button to work with when it comes to jumping and performing Sonic's other skills. In this case, um, the X button on my Sonic Pro 5 pad. And it might vary depending on which controller you use. 
if you're having trouble getting the controller to work at all, my advice would be to boot it up through Steam, by adding it a non-Steam game to your library. Alright, so I'm out of here, guys, and I will see you all next time. Take care, later.